As we continue our discussion about AC circuits, we're going to actually get into the whole idea of EM radiation, EM being electromagnetic radiations. And that's actually one of the more profound consequences of AC circuits, is our ability to produce radiation. Um, and we say radiation, and radiation comes in a bunch of different forms, and we'll see uh, some different examples later on. But for right now, radiation is any type of light, be visible light, infrared, gamma rays, x-rays, um, all the whole range of electromagnetic spectrum. So let's see how this works. One of the ways that we can do this is we start with a voltage source that will vary in a sinusoidal manner, so an a traditional AC uh, voltage source. And we're going to connect it to two wonderful little antenna. What we're going to do is we're going to start to vary the, the, uh, the sinusoidal voltage source here. So voltage source, when it's uh, in one way, it's going to cause more positive charges to be on one side and negative charges to be on the other. And what's going to happen is that's going to set up an electric field. And that electric field is going to be pointing in a traditional way in the downward direction. So as we vary the charge, we're going to start with a lot of positive charges up here. And the voltage source is going to cause this number to start to decrease and this number to decrease in the minus sign. So we're going to start to go to more of a neutral way of doing this. And you'll see that as, the, as this gets smaller, as these uh, values, as the sinusoidal field gets smaller, the electric field that gets produced gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then we switch our signs, and when the, uh, the voltage switches its signs, again we're going to get the same thing happening, except for now the field has reversed, and when the voltage gets larger, the field is going to get larger. Again, when you get to the top, we start to decrease and go down, and then we're going to switch again and produce down. You'll start to see that as a function of time, along this black arrow, we're going to start to produce this radiation, this electric field that gets produced and gets radiated out outside. And this will happen in this direction, will happen in this direction, will happen towards us, away from us, all the directions away that are perpendicular to uh, this, so that where the field is in parallel to this uh, oscillation. And this works really nice, and the radiation is going to get radiated out away from it. Well, that's not the only thing that's going to happen. The other thing that's going to happen is because we have a changing in electric field, we're going to get a changing magnetic field that matches this uh, this change. So we're going to start with our regular uh, electric field, our time electric field, our time dependent electric field, and what's going to happen is we're going to add in a magnetic field. And the way that it adds in, um, you'll see that if the field is down in the downward direction, we're going to get a magnetic field perpendicular to this. And it's one of the um, uh, one of the consequences of uh, Maxwell's equations, which if we haven't mentioned it yet, Maxwell's equations are the general form that we've seen for all of electricity and magnetism. There's four equations that govern electricity and magnetism and how the two of them relate to each other. So we get an electric field pointing down, a magnetic field pointing into the page. As the electric field gets more positive, the magnetic field is going to reverse and go in the towards us. And the two of them together are going to actually propagate. And as we saw in the previous picture, we're creating more and more, and they're going to get radiated out. And this will actually bring up a new right-hand rule. And the right-hand rule that we're going to get will actually tell us which way the radiation propagates if we know the electric field and the magnetic field. And pretty much says is if you have the electric field, you cross the electric field, your first, your index finger, into uh, the magnetic field, which is your second finger. So E is 1, B is 2, and the direction that the uh, radiation propagates, which in a little bit more advanced uh, physics will be called the pointing vector, points in the direction of the way that this is going to travel. And it's really nothing more than E cross into B. The final consequences that we're going to get from this is we ask if this is propagating, how fast is this electric field moving away from the source? And we'll find that if we actually multiply two uh, values together we've seen before, the permittivity and the permeability, we'll see that these two values together, one over the square root of them, 
will give us a very well-known number, and that's 2.99792 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, or the value of C. So our radiation propagates at the uh, speed of light. And this is, um, actually we define what the speed of light is, and we can actually figure out these other values from it. So C is defined, mu naught is defined, and we can measure E naught based off of these two values. So we can see that electromagnetic radiation, or light, or any other type of radiation like this, uh, does have some um, relationship between electric and magnetic field. And finally, last but not least, there's another way that we could calculate this, and it's the electric field for the radiation divided by the magnetic field of the radiation will give us the speed of light as well.